Howdy everyone and welcome to the Serial Geek TV YouTube channel. My name is James Etock and today we're going to take a look at Dupira, Al Kushni, Askupati, Anakalatum. No, I haven't gone insane. That phrase connects two cartoons of the 1980s. I would ask, care to guess what they are? But I'm guessing the video title and thumbnail I've created since this recording pretty much gives the answer away. So, Dupira, Al Kushni, Askupati, Anakalatum. It's a phrase that was first uttered in the Dungeons and Dragons episode Day of the Dungeon Master by everyone's favourite spoiled brat, Eric the Cavalier. In the episode, Eric, having grown tired of Dungeon Master's endless riddles, inadvertently prompts Dungeon Master into giving him the powers of a Dungeon Master. This leads to some wonderful dialogue delivered expertly by Donnie Most, doing his best impression of Dungeon Master. Let's see, what would Dungeon Master say? You will find it, unless it finds you first. It lies a long way off, yet in truth, it is very near. How is that? <laughs> With his newly acquired powers in place, Eric is determined to find a way back to Earth for he and his friends. Their quest is a perilous one, and with each new danger, Eric learns that being imbued with such incredible powers is not as easy as he first thought. At the end of their journey, Eric locates the Golden Grimoire, and in an effort to find a way home, he begins to recite the spell, Dupira Al Kushni Askupati Anakalatum. The spell indeed works, and a magical portal begins to open, showing, quite clearly, the fairground park from whence they were taken. That was 1984. Cut to 1987. In the HP Lovecraft-inspired episode of the real Ghostbusters, The Collect Call of Cthulhu, the jumpsuited paranormal eliminators seek the help of Alice Derelith to aid them in their latest, highly mysterious case. The Ghostbusters chase down the cult of Cthulhu and confront them in the dwellings of Wagner's occult shop. Sadly, things do not go as planned and the Ghostbusters are captured by a Shagoth, a terrifying tentacled creature that is all mouth and razor sharp teeth. Alice begins chanting a spell, Dupira, Alkushni, Askupati, and Akalatun. Just like in the aforementioned Dungeons and Dragons episode, this chant is incredibly effective and the monster turns to stone shortly before crumbling to pieces right before the eyes of the somewhat perplexed Ghostbusters. But the connection doesn't end there. I mentioned the book Eric the Cavalier used was named The Golden Grimoire. Let us now jump to 1988 and an episode of the real Ghostbusters titled Loathe Thy Neighbour. In the episode, the unique, and by unique I mean downright weird, McCorb family find themselves plagued by a threatening entity that is slowly taking control of their home. We've all been there, right? The Ghostbusters arrive on the scene and begin exploring the McCorb's mansion. The problem is, the presentation of the McCorb's mansion results in the Ghostbusters having to figure out what is spiritual-based activity and what is simply decor. Whilst in the library, which contains over 3,000 books, the Ghostbusters find themselves attacked by the books. Yes, this is a weird episode. As the Ghostbusters seek shelter from a plethora of paper cuts, a book conveniently lands in the hands of Ray. A book that can end the madness, the Golden Grimoire. Sure enough, Ray uses the book to end the madness. So how is it that two separate cartoons produced years apart by two different studios can feature these connections? Well, both episodes were written by the legendary Michael Reeves. His work on Dungeons and & Dragons and The Real Ghostbusters, as well as a whole host of cartoons including Black Star, He-Man, Mighty Orbots, The Transformers, Bionic 6, Gem, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and later Batman the Animated Series and Gargoyles, is cause for much celebration, penning many, many wonderful episodes of all those aforementioned shows. And given that you're still here, how about a little bonus material? Otherwise, this would be a rather short video. The evil wizard Dusan Mitrovich has once more worked his magic and extracted the vocal track from the Collect Call of Cthulhu, so I thought it would be fun to showcase some script pages and hear the dialogue without any music or sound effects. So sit down, I mean, why are you standing? Put your feet up and enjoy the talented group of voice actors Arsenio Hall, Maurice LaMarche, Lorenzo Music, Laura Summer, Frank Welker and guest Jody Carlisle recording their dialogue on the 30th of July 
1986. Also, be sure to look out for numerous pieces of deleted dialogue. Ooh. <laughs> hey, listen to this. From Monday to Friday, the New York Public Library presents the Necronomicon. I didn't know the library did rock concerts. It's not a rock group, Winston. It's the single most powerful book of magic spells ever written. H.P. Lovecraft and others wrote a whole series of horror stories based on it. Come on, we gotta see it. I'll bet the copyright page alone has a PKE valence of 9.9. .9. You go ahead, Ray. I've got a date today. She'll be here any minute, in fact. Ghostbusters. Uh-huh. Hang on. Help is on the way. That's for me. So's this. I've got it, Peter. You're a prince, Egon. Yes. I see. No problem. We can handle it. Okay, introductions. Candy the Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters candy. Wow, I've heard so much about you guys. Well, we got a full day planned, so... Sorry, Peter. We've got what sounds like a Class 7 corporeal entity at the library. Great! I'll go warm up Ecto-1. It's not fair. It's just not fair. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. But, but... Ghostbus is a heartbreaker's kid. Don't get too close to him. Sheesh, you think that guy Klein owns the paperback rights the way he's carrying on. He's right to worry, Peter. The Necronomicon spells are like sonic keys that can open portals to other dimensions, where the great old ones wait to take over the Earth. Yeah? Give me an example. Cthulhu. Isn't he? Cthulhu? I heard of him. He's bad, right? He makes Gozer look like Little Mary Sunshine. You're kidding. We're following them into the sewer? There's no other choice. Those green meanies match the description here of the spawn of Cthulhu. Acolyte creatures that serve the big guy. I suspected as much. We have to find the Necronomicon at once. What's the rush? We'll track it down sooner or later. You don't understand. The spawn are probably part of a cult of Cthulhu. And they might be planning to awaken him from his slumber on the ocean's floor. That's bad. And according to this... The stars are in the right position to try such a resurrection only once every 60 years. And the next favorable time is... Let me guess. Tonight. How'd you know? We need as much information on the cult of Cthulhu as we can get. There's a woman named Alice Derelith up in Arkham, Massachusetts, who might be able to help us. Ray, you and Winston check the book of Dizan and the narcotic manuscripts. Peter, you and I will go up to Arkham. And that's the situation. What do you think? That is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons even death may die. Gee, that's catchy. It's a quote from the Necronomicon about great Cthulhu. If we don't do something quickly, this cult may succeed in awakening him from his age-long sleep. I'll go with you back to New York. Hurry, there's not a moment to lose. She's a take-charge kind of lady. I like that. Ray, that is the craziest idea I ever heard. You think some old science fiction stories can save the world? Listen, H.P. Lovecraft and other writers back in the 20s and the 30s created a whole mythos around Cthulhu. And I remember one story in an old issue of Weird Tales that told how to defeat him. It just might work. Those writers used the Necronomicon as research for their fiction. But where can we find a collection of old pulp magazines? Just leave it to me. This is ridiculous. We've been at this for hours. We can't give up. If Ray's right, it's our only chance to stop the summoning. We're getting nowhere. I vote we just wait for Chick, Ch whatever his name is. When he shows up, let's blast him. Winston's got a point. Something that looks like Godzilla wearing a giant octopus hat won't be hard to find. This is it. It's called the Horror from the Depths. That's the one, all right. Let's go. I thought you were supposed to rotate the tires. I figured, why bother? They rotate enough when the car's moving. Oh. Hey, no problem. We'll just put on the spare and... That was the spare. <sighs> Sometimes I really regret answering that ad you guys ran. Egon, what do you got? His power is completely off the scale. None of our equipment can even begin to stop him. We don't have a prayer. You're such a Pollyanna, Egon. Ray, the story in the magazine. Right, I forgot about it. Great. He moves his lips when he reads. Aha! 
It says here that they lured Cthulhu to an electrical plant and blasted him with 100 gigavolts of electricity. So, did it work? I don't know. The, the last page is missing. Where can we get that kind of power? There's one chance. If we can lure him near the roller coaster, we can use our particle beams to ionize the metal superstructure. That might attract a lightning bolt. It's worth a try. But how do we get Cthulhu near the roller coaster? I've got an idea. A very crazy idea. I'll take the Necronomicon back to Miskatonic University with me, where it can't be used for evil. Do you think Cthulhu was destroyed, Professor Derelith? Even if he wasn't, the stars are no longer right for him to awaken. The world is safe again, for a time. I must be going. Uh, what's your hurry? Why not let me show you the town for a few days? Wonderful. We'll start by seeing the exhibit of the Eltdown Shards at the Natural History Museum. Uh, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. And there's a lecture on the Xanthu tablets and other pre juridic petroglyphs at Columbia. Listen, there's this great restaurant I know. You'd like it, really. Or a movie? About a and that's the end. Thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe and I shall catch you on the next one.